Welcome to the parlor of Fountain Elms, where family and friends have been enjoying a cup of tea while the children play with their Christmas presents. They'll come back to the parlor after dinner for dessert. Let me show you around. This room contains a tall tree from the, in the German tradition with homemade decorations or ornaments, tissue paper roses, gingerbread cookies, and gilded walnuts. During this Victorian time, people used things they had to make decorations, so magazines, scraps of fabric, even sheet music. The Delineator magazine in 1901 provided instructions for the gilded walnuts, even though they appeared in Italy and Germany for years before that. Um, if you make them according to the instructions, you crack the nut open, take out the meat, put a fortune inside, glue it back together, and then on New Year's Day, you would open these and everyone would have their own fortune. The clock and the plates are examples of Meissen porcelain. Meissen is a small town outside of Dresden, and it is considered one of the oldest porcelain in Europe. It started in 1710, and it's still being made today. The clock was actually sold by Tiffany's, and the plates belong to the Williams family. And then over on the Etagere, we have some more Meissen porcelain. These painted um, porcelain figurines are sweetmeat dishes, and sweetmeats were any kind of fruit that was candied in a thick syrup, or toffee, or candied nuts, or marzipan, like you see here. And marzipan is almond meal blended with sugar or honey, and then it can be shaped into different things like fruit. Gifts were mainly for children, but sometimes women would get a very special gift from a loved one. So this is a pin and a necklace that were from the retailer Charles Schiller in Utica. And then under the tree, we have games and toys for children. And on the floor, we have the game Triez, which is similar to bocce. Over by the sofa, we have anchor blocks, which were actually a toy made in Germany. Uh, they were modeled after the wooden blocks that were used by Friedrich Froebel, who was considered the founder of kindergarten, and felt that children should learn through playthings. You'll notice that there's lots of holiday greenery and flowers in the room. Uh, evergreens have long symbolized eternal life and fertility, and Native Americans honor the healing powers of the cedar tree. During this time, there was also several publications that focus on the language of flowers, like this book here, whose illustrations are by Kate Greenaway, and her illustrations are also on the tea set. These books often had poetry and would assign a meaning um, or emotion to a particular flower and plant. So there are messages in the flowers in the parlor. The ivy and the holly on the dessert table represent domestic happiness and fidelity. The red roses on the piano say, I love you. <laughs> and the combination of white and red roses on the etagere send a message of unity. I know this year has been different for many of us, but we aren't the first generation to have faced pandemics and disease. You'll find out that drinking tea during the 1800s was a pretty good idea. Many diseases, like cholera, were spread through unclean water. So by boiling the water, you could kill the cholera bacteria. So the water used in tea was actually safe to drink. In these tough times, you're welcome to visit the museum, or if you'd rather, you can visit us online and view our collections, our exhibits, and our programming. Thanks for joining me in the parlor. Happy holidays.